So we'll go ahead and get started. And if there's other people kind of join us as we get going, uh, we'll make sure to, I'll make sure to uh, welcome them in. And here's Thank another you. person calling in. So, um, well, you can help me. I would ask everybody, uh, if you could, um, to please um, put yourself on, on mute just so we don't have any uh, bleed over from phones or computers or anything like that. Um, and uh, um, we'll go ahead and get started. First, I want to say uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, attending, attending this training. Um, you know, our, our goal here um, is, is, is to make sure that, that we're providing some tools and some resources to each of you um, to make sure that you, you have some understanding and, and, and knowledge about putting on scout meetings uh, virtually. Um, I do want to make sure that everybody's aware, I included in, in the email yesterday that we are recording this, uh, so we'll make sure that we can um, share this with other leaders as well so they've got a resource um, you know, after, after this meeting uh, to be able to learn some more about putting on scout meetings virtually. A um, couple people that I want to introduce uh, who will be uh, presenting a little bit later, uh, Vicki Dubas and Tim Overrocker. Uh, they're both volunteers uh, with units throughout our council. Um, they've been using Zoom uh, with their um, units over the last few weeks and uh, we'll provide some insight about um, how they engage with uh, specifically Zoom um, in, in making sure that they're putting on scouting uh, virtually. Uh, they're, they've, they've, they've done a great job with, with starting to utilize these resources and learn some of the things that are out there. Uh, so we figured um, to make sure that you guys had a chance to talk to leaders who are using it, we wanted to engage Vicki and Tim in, in helping us out. So uh, they'll be speaking a little bit, a little bit later. A uh, couple of things that I want to go over before we have them, uh, before we have them share their experiences and knowledge. Um, again, I want to reiterate that, you know, among the purposes of what we're trying to do uh, is to make sure that all of our units throughout Three Harbors Council um, are engaging in scouting right now, uh, virtually through den meetings, troop meetings, um, participating in some of the scouting at home resources that uh, we have available at the council level. Uh, so that scouting, when we get back to normal, when we're back in the outdoors and back meeting in our um, church basements and um, you know school gymnasiums and things like that, that that scouting experience has continued through, uh, and that you know we don't we don't miss miss too much of, of that opportunity. Um, again, I uh, want to reiterate that Vicky and Tim will be sharing kind of some best practices, uh, their experiences with using this uh, technology um, virtually uh, to engage in scouting. Um, one of the things that I want to uh, make sure that everybody's aware of is you know, we're all learning a lot about Zoom and WebEx and Google Hangouts kind of all at the same time. Uh, so by no means am I um, an expert on, on any of this. Uh, a lot of this stuff I've kind of learned using it at the council level over the last several weeks. And, you know, Vicki and Tim um, speaking on their behalf, they're definitely not experts, but again, they've utilized the resources. So um, they, they can definitely share some knowledge and, and things about, about Zoom and virtual uh, technology with scouting. A lot of the things that, uh, I've learned, and, and I'm sure Vicki and Tim would say the same thing, um, have just kind of been stumbled upon and self-taught. Um, so, you know, a lot of things that you'll learn will probably be, probably be similar as well. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of is, while Zoom is probably the most popular and most used resource out there right now, there are all sorts of other sort of, uh, other resources. So you, you may find that WebEx is better for some things you want to do, or Google Hangouts, uh, Join Me. There's lots of different resources out there, uh, so feel free to to you know do some research and, and find what works best for you. So, um, one of the things that's you know obviously come up with technology and meetings, scouting, things like that, is the increased need for security and safety in meetings like this. Um, you know, uh, we've heard a lot about Zoom bombing and, you know, issues with large meetings, people coming in with images or videos or um, bad actors coming into meetings. So there's a few things uh, that I think are important to share about um, 
safety in uh, Zoom meetings or other type of technology meetings. And what I'm sharing here, this is a graphic. Um, you know, this is a graphic, um, and I've seen several different versions out there that talk about some of the best ways to secure Zoom. And these would probably be consistent among most other uh, technology services out there where you're doing meetings like this. Um, you know, things like making sure you're using a specific ID for your meetings, having passwords, um, invite-only meetings, locking meetings, you know, once every, once everybody, um, once that meeting has started, um, things like that. Um, you, as a host of, of a meeting, um, would have the ability to remove people or shut their cameras off, you know, things like that to make sure that um, your meeting is secure with the people that are involved in it. Um, you know, here's, there's, this is 10 ways to, to secure Zoom. Um, and I will share this with all of you um, after this meeting. So you have that as a resource and just some knowledge out there. Um, but this is, you know, one of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing is keeping our meeting secure. Um, you know, obviously we're working with youth uh, and we want to make sure that the environment in which our youth participate in scouting is uh, as safe as possible uh, for us to make it. So, you know, several of the things that are mentioned there are things that we can put in place uh, to make sure that we're doing the best job we can to keep our kids safe and secure during our scouting meetings while we're on uh, technology services uh, holding our scouting meetings. Um, so let me close that out. Um, Additionally, one of the things that I want to make sure that uh, is, 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 is something we're all aware of and continuing to practice uh, throughout our virtual meetings is youth protection. Uh, youth protection policies and practices still uh, exist during these types of meetings. So things like too deep leadership, uh, making sure that parents are with their scout as they log in, and that the parents are in the room and present during your meetings. Um, those are things that you want to make sure are happening. Um, it's important to be aware, and you can set up um, you can set up your meetings to enable waiting rooms. Uh, all of you were in a waiting room before coming into this, and the reason why you want to set up that waiting room is if you have you know one youth who. He's just a, or he or she is a real go-getter and gets to the meetings early all the time and um, he joins that Zoom meeting 10 minutes before everybody else does. You as a leader don't want to let that scout in at the same time because you're sitting there in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You want to wait until that second leader with you or third leader or fourth leader, whatever it may be. You want to wait till those other leaders are logging in at the same time and allowing those leaders in before you start letting your kids in, because that covers you with that 2D um, leadership practice that we have in the Boy Scouts of America. Um, another thing that uh, it might might serve well is when you sign in, you know, I can look at everybody's name here and I see a lot of people with first and last names, some that just have a first name, you know, uh, John's iPad is another one. Um, one of the things that you that that I might suggest uh, doing is making sure that when your scouts sign in, they just sign in with their first name. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of times where sometimes people take screenshots, you know, because it's exciting uh, this first time you're using something like this, and you might want to share uh, share that with with um, you know with your families and, and and things like that, and you know that that's that's perfectly you know okay to do, but. We want to be very, very cautious about putting that identifying information out there about our scouts, um, especially if you're posting something to Facebook or an email feed and somebody picks that up and they see, oh, uh, John Anderson, and I remember that kid when I was the coach of the Little League baseball team. And you want to be very careful about making sure that opportunity is available for somebody to start tracking, you know, your scouts down. Um, so that's that's something else that uh, um, I've seen be suggested as well. Is make sure you know it's just a first name uh, that your scouts are identifying themselves with. Um, so those are a few of the things that um, I've got notes on, and I'm sure Vicky and Tim, having done this, uh, can probably share some more insight uh, in how they've worked with their scouts to continue to uh, engage that safety and security 
within uh, their programs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let uh, the, the, the leaders who are doing this uh, on a weekly basis with their scouts um, share some of their knowledge and insights with you. And we'll start first kind of at that den level for, for Cub Scout Packs uh, with Tim Overrocker. Tim, go ahead. Hi guys, I, as uh, Cortland said, my name's uh, Tim Overrocker. Um, I am a bear uh, den leader uh, for PAC uh, 353. Um, I can see a couple people, but if you guys are at the den level, if I can get a thumbs up so I just know if that, uh, if I've got a couple people, wonderful, I see a couple, great. So as uh, Cortland was saying, the number one thing is that, that youth protection piece. And uh, what we do is whenever the kids log in, uh, mom or dad has to be in that frame in the beginning. Uh, the kids can put on the headphones and stuff uh, after that, but seeing that mom or dad uh, has been there and is in the room is a big, big go for us. Um, the other thing I wanna point out is if you as a den leader are, are doing most of the talking, then you're probably not utilizing this the best way possible. Think of it as more of a, a show and tell where we put out the activities on, we have a private Facebook page for our den, and so we put out all the activities for the week uh, on there, and then we use our den meetings as a time for show and tell. Uh, one of the things that we do to help teach the kids how to use Zoom uh, is we uh, tell each kid to open up with a joke, and we just have everybody muted so it's not a, a, a big chaos with all the noise, and we unmute one kid at a time and have them tell a joke, uh, it gets them used to hearing other people's voices, hearing their own voice through the system. And it allows you to kind of get a feedback of how the kid's doing uh, throughout the process. Uh, in addition to that, um, let's see here. Think of it as more of a show and tell than a lecture. And uh, make sure you put out the activities on head, see parents, uh, try and make things interesting. Uh, I wear different hats during the, the different meetings. I have a, a squid hat that I put on. Um, you know, I, I see the, the wolf uh, head in the background. We've used that a couple times. Uh, our meetings are at night, so it's hard for us to get outside and do things, but uh, that's it. If, and then at the very, very end, we also give them a chance just to chat and, and let them be kids. These kids haven't seen each other in a, in a month now. And so giving a chance just to be a little silly uh, is, is important for them uh, developmentally. Uh, Court, that's really, really all I've got. If you guys, you know, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds can do this without an issue. So don't be afraid to let them try this out. Okay, great. Thank you, Tim. Um, Vicki, how about at the troop level? What are some things that you can share with the group here? I hope I don't talk your ear off. <laughs> Okay, um, first of all, I wanted to kind of talk about why, to start off, why Zoom? Um, I, I am Vicki Dubas, um, our Troop 595 in West Dallas. We have over 50 boys and we have over 10 girls. So we're talking about a very large group. So when we were looking, I should say I was looking at what um, format, yes, I looked at FaceTime, well, that wasn't gonna work. Um, Facebook Live, our Facebook is basically, our um, older scouts and adults, so that wasn't going to work. Um, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, I know that as I've been doing merit badges with boys and girls elsewhere from our, our troop, they've been doing that, but they just really didn't accommodate as big as we were. So that's where we ended up with Zoom. We started with um, Zoom before some of the um, safety features have now been put in in default. So the waiting room wasn't there. I had already instituted that. Um, and a number of those things that Cartland's talking about, they just sort of are there now. A um, Couple things that we found as in our very first meeting, our very first planning meeting is that um, because we are so big, and you might have a girl in the girl troop, you might have a boy in one patrol and another boy in another patrol and a, an adult. Um, the idea is that you might wanna have multiple um, vehicles, computers, notebooks, whatever. Um, sometimes in some houses that didn't work. Um, I think we've gotten better at it. There are definitely um, some families have decided this person has the smartphone and this person has um, his notebook in a different room. Um, but 
your families may have to work that all out. And um, that's kind of a in process kind of thing. So if you've at all looked at um, Loom, um, we, I chose to do, to pay for the, the pro level because at that time, um, some of the features were not really available. One of it being that the free version at that time was a 40 minute limit. Now they've kind of waived that um, for everyone, but we need at least two and a half hours with getting together and doing our meeting and then having an evaluation at the end or even a planning before. So we went into the pro level, which only cost like $15 a month, wasn't a big deal. And um, it also gave us some other options like breakout rooms. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, when, just like this screen shows, if you haven't done it before, when you set up your account, <clears throat> you set up a meeting, you set up the time, you set up um, <clears throat> a password, and um, you're going to set into your settings whether <clears throat> you're going to use a waiting room. Well, now it's default, but that um, they come into the waiting room, you can mute them, mute people when they come in. Um, you can deal with the chat features, whether people are allowed to have a private chat. Um, what I tell you right now is that when I contact the families, I let them know that there's no, hand, no silly handles. It has to be a name. Um, we had somebody come in in a handle and I wouldn't let them in. I asked them messaging, who are you? They didn't answer, so I removed them. Um, I will not, we will not take any cutesy little handles. I didn't like that handle either anyhow. So I, if they came in and using their real name, I'm not even sure because I don't know who it was, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, I send the invitation out uh, an hour before the meeting, um, not by Facebook, um, because even though our Facebook is private, other people can have access to it. So by sending my invitation out an hour beforehand, I will also send them the password at that time. Um, that seems to be working fine. I often have an email earlier in the, in the day just reminding them, these are the things that we need. You will get um, a contact from me be just before the meeting. Our troop meetings are being um, handled pretty much like a troop meeting, but with a little bit of different flair here. Um, I actually open up a hot half hour beforehand, um, keeping in mind the youth protection, making sure that one of my other adults come in and then people come in. Um, I think it's really important for our scouts. Our scouts come from at least 19 different schools. So we're a real social gathering. And a lot of times the guys, girls just come to visit. And I need to have them have that half hour time of visiting and getting over that. We haven't seen anybody. And while they're doing that, there are a couple of things that I'm doing. Um, I, my, my adults, some of them I am setting them up as co-hosts as they come in, which is when on the participant side, you can click on their name and it'll say something more and I can make them a co-host. By making them a co-host, when I put them out into break room, they will have all the same kind of things that um, abilities I have like sharing screen. Um, right now, as we're funneling in, we're having like 53 different screens coming in. And that's an awful lot coming in. So my co-host can look at the names and they can also admit people. While people are coming in, I'm also assigning them for later on a breakout room. Now, on our level, we have the ability to make breakout rooms and um, we made 17 seven, seven breakout rooms. And each of them are based on, um, <clears throat> based on what they are going to be doing on their breakout patrol time. Um, that's a lot of work. And I think we're going to do something a little different next time is that my breakout, my co-hosts are going to have certain kids assigned that they're going to um, put into the breakout room. It's very easy. On the bottom of the screen, um, when you have that, 
format. It'll say breakout room. You click on it and it'll say assign and they will have everybody's name. And now I have a list of who goes in what room. Where we end up having a problem is that maybe last week somebody came in on their mom's phone and this week they're on something else and I might not know who they are. But that's okay if I assign everybody in when I do a breakout room. Um, I'll see who's not assigned. It, it all works out. Um, one of the very first things you need to do when you start doing this is make sure that the, your scouts all go through the etiquette of a meeting, um, making sure that they turn themselves mute, make sure that they're, if you haven't turned off their private chat, warn them what, to, what about that. There's a reaction um, little button there. There are certain times that that would be appropriate, but that kind of stuff you really do need to talk to your scouts about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Okay, um, so one thing that we discovered after the first meeting, thinking about all these different screens and we're trying to have our flag and how do you do that, came with the conclusion that um, put together a PowerPoint. And when I use share screen, we have a flag. And then the senior patrol leader can get us going off with our flag ceremony. Um, I also made up a scout oath and scout loss so that our newer scouts who are not quite as on top of that um, are able to follow along. Um, the, the senior leaders of the boys and girls have have basically planned the themes. Um, one of the things that we've done is insert videos in our YouTube video in our PowerPoint to make it easier to get to um, whatever we're doing. I'm hoping that I can encourage some of the Scots to do a more hands-on uh, and um, teaching skill, but they haven't really gotten to that point yet. They've talked about it, but they haven't gotten to it yet. But like this last meeting on Thursday, we, we did emergency preparedness and we had a, a real cute video from FEMA that really talked about what's a disaster, what's an emergency and a little bit about what the plan is. So while I was finishing doing out the breakout, the senior patrol leader and older boys were having a discussion. Um, so they watched the video, then we had the, the breakout, the, my co-hosts and older scouts that are assigned to different rooms go to their rooms and they work on the different things that their patrols are doing. Right now we have our newest scouts, which we call our Gila Monsters. They're working on their scout and tenderfoot things. Um, we have the next level scouts are, they're actually gonna be doing, if we go to summer camp, they have first aid and they're working on first aid things. Um, there's another patrol that is working on some other advancement. And then we have two big groups that are, three big groups that are working on different merit badges based on their level, um, keeping them pretty busy. Um, that's about 20 to 30 minutes right there. Um, what's really nice in the breakout room is that I can go to the breakout rooms and see how things are going. Um, but I can also message them and say, hey, another five minutes. And, and then we all come back together. When we come back together, we've been having different game activities. We've done Kahoot, we've done Quizlet. Um, last, on Thursday, after doing the emergency preparedness, I found um, JeopardyLab.com has um, great Jeopardies that you can edit and make it uh, appropriate and so, because I have everybody's name, that one's a little bit more guided, whereas the Kahoot and Quizlet kind of work on its own. But it was great keeping them real active in whatever was in the patrol um, activity or the troop activity. Um, we also have something that we're doing next week. It's called a meeting bingo, where there'll be, everybody's gonna be given a template of a bingo and they have to write whatever they think they can add, I'm, I gave them a couple of samples, like uh, they hear a dog barking during the meeting or they see somebody have a bookcase in the background and they can fill in whatever and whatever they see, they can 
bring, uh, cross it off and we'll see who's got the most filled in at the very end and we'll have a little prize at the end or something that probably when we get together, but just something to keep them um, active. After our game, we have um, a closing. We always close with the outdoor code. So again, that came right back to the, um, the PowerPoint and that was very, that was great. Okay, so we've used Zoom now for planning our meetings. We used it for a committee eagle proposal that is going to be a total virtual um, eagle project. Um, we've used it for, um, I've used it for merit badges and that. There are other ideas. We're actually having an outing on the end of the month, which is what's supposed to be on to Eagle. We're gonna do a virtual field trip and this will allow our patrols to do some working on menu planning and what kind of gear has to be pulled. Um, we're going to end with a virtual campfire. A couple other things you might wanna think about like a chop challenge or a dessert competition and see how that all goes. Lots of different things to do. Um, last little thing I wanted to just kind of put together was uh, rose and thorns. Um, the rose to this is that in our weeks together here, um, connecting our over 60 boys and girls, um, we've seen everyone but three. And that's pretty awesome. Um, and the thorns is that it's a little harder to get our youth planning and engaged. Um, uh, we're very well boy run, girl run, whatever. And this has been kind of sluggish. And um, I feel sometimes that I'm doing a little bit more of it, but I think it's part of being new and it's getting there. So, okay. All right, very good. Tim, Vicki, thank you. Um, I guess at this point, um, open it up to questions. I've seen a couple in uh, the chat uh, that's been going, but does anybody have any other questions that they wanna share via chat or just you know, uh, to the whole group? Uh, that either Vicki, Tim, or I might be able to uh, to address. Yeah, hi, this is Jeff Sings. I'm from Troop 530 um, in Hales Corners. I have a question. So we've done a fair amount of our planning meetings. We've tried a couple different tools, ended up arriving at Zoom just because it seems to be the, the cleanest and most efficient. Um, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday is our first Zoom troop meeting. Um, we're kind of keeping it a short, you know, one hour or less meeting just because the kids didn't plan all that much. We did a PLC last week, um, kind of a specially scheduled one so the boys could actually plan their agenda, their schedule, um, what PowerPoints they want to pull together. A couple of them are making videos about how to set up a tent and things like that because this will also be our new boy kind of inaugural meeting. Um, all of that said, I'm just gonna lose my question. Um, oh, so there's two ways really to set up meetings. And I've done a lot of webinars as a, as a professional. Um, webinars tend to be not like this, where you, you int very intentionally can't see everybody. Um, you start everybody hard muted. I mean, this, this call started and there was a lot of background noise. So intentionally starting everyone muted. Um, with the paid version, turning off the ability to unmute, so forcing people to raise their hands and then unmuting them um, as a moderator. Um, how do you run a meeting? I mean, we again have about 50 boys, so it's a it's a large group. Vicki, similar to what you described. Um, it, do you find that there's sufficient compliance to allow people to unmute themselves, or are you moderating that? Um. I, the, my, the squirrels that I have on my regular meeting are usually the same squirrels I have. Um, generally, they've been pretty good. Um, every now and then somebody will have to say, hey, you guys mute, mute yourselves. Um, we had gone over the etiquette and sometimes they have to be reminded. Um, like I said, we, we meet beforehand to try to get some of that, that busy stuff mm -hmm. out. out. Um, and I think that's pretty important. Um, some of the boys don't run off or girls run off right away. If we don't have a, an immediate committee meeting or something, I let them stay and just try, chat with one another to give them that opportunity. Cool. Okay. 
Um, a more logistic question. So I've, I've hosted a couple Zoom meetings. Um, this one, you know, you have it set so that in the chat window, I can either chat to everyone or I can chat to hosts or co-hosts. Um, how do you, it, where, where is the checkbox to turn off um, chat, private chat with other individuals? Because obviously you want that turned off. That is in your settings. When in the you, meeting settings or in the account settings? Um, your meeting settings. Okay. And it's set before the meeting is started or it's, it's a setting you have to change after the meeting starts? Um, I do it beforehand. It's, okay. it's a live setting that you can change at any time, even in the middle of a meeting. There's been times where uh, if all of a sudden I've got a bunch of boys that are muting and unmuting themselves, I can just go in and just at that point, okay, guys, I'm going to pull all control for a moment. I'll give mm -hmm. it back to you when you guys can show that you can calm down. But it is a, it's a dynamic setting uh, underneath as a host. Uh, you can change that in the middle of the meeting. So I saw that for muting, self-muting and self-unmuting. What I'm asking is the chat in the group chat window. Yes. That's the same, the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I actually just uh, pulled up the chat window here. Right now I've got everybody, I've got to check does everyone publicly, uh, participant can chat with everyone publicly. I, I'm going to change that right now to host only. So, you know, I, I can change that back and forth throughout the entire meeting. All right. um, and that's and in the three dots next to the two line for you? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So for me, obviously, I don't have that because I'm not a host, but that, that's where it would be. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, I see some talk about co-hosts. I have to comment that there are when I'm talking about a co-host, I'm not talking about, um, I can set up my account that someone else can um, set up the meeting. A co-host that I'm talking about are actually just to participants that they have some, some control of doing some things. They did not set up the meeting. They're just able to be moderators. Meetings. Right. And, yeah. well, and that's right. important to know the difference there. Yeah, well, I experienced, so I found um, we've been doing the free version and up until we had one meeting where it allowed us to extend beyond 40 minutes, every other meeting has been hard cutting us off at 40 minutes. Um, so I don't know if that's a, an always thing now or if that's still a random thing. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, I've had some meetings with some other groups uh, using the free section. Uh, if you go over 40 minutes, all that has to happen is the host just restarts the meeting and then the kids or participants can rejoin with the same link and same credentials and you have another 40 minutes just like yep. that. And we've done that. The last one, I had a cool pop-up. It said, hey, we're giving you a gift. Your meeting's been extended. There is no 40 minute limit. Um, so that we had, I had it all set up for people to dial back in. Um, meetings like this, that's not bad. A meeting of 50 people, it'll take 10 to 15 minutes to get everyone to rejoin and by then your time's half over. Um, so I was going to comment on your co-host thing. I, I, we were just loaned a commercial license from a, of one of our, um, one of our adult leaders, his company donated access to their account and said we could set up evening meetings using their paid license, which was cool. Um, what I found is that you, for this co-host thing where you're assigning people permissions during the meeting, um, you know, that's, that's what you guys are doing with the three of you. And, and yeah, it allows you each to be moderators during the meeting. What my experience was, I tried to go and set up a person as a co-owner, I think maybe was the phrase they used, um, which would allow two people to start the meeting. Um, that one actually popped up with an error saying that this person isn't in this, or, you know, isn't in this license and therefore can't be. So my experience, at least in the last couple of days of practicing with this is um, really the one licensed person has to schedule and start the meeting and then you can grant co-hosts to do all kinds of moderating, which is great. Um, that, that's just my experience. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, Jeff, uh, we, we, with the council account that we just rolled out, we tried to do the same thing because I didn't want to schedule all of Wally's uh, merit badge clinics. And uh, the first time I tried to do that, it, it, it did the same thing to me. So, yeah. So. That, that brings another question. So we were interested in buying a, a, a license. Um, you know, if this goes for, for one month or two months, well, $150 is a little steep. If it goes for a year, well, it's a great deal. Um, I had another provider um, go to meeting had given us a free 90 day license, um, although we found that we had so many technical difficulties, it wasn't even viable. 
Um, so we've kind of come back to go to meeting. Is there, has scouting in general, it seems like they should negotiate a discount program with the Zoom corporate, you know, even if they did it at the national level, but I mean, are, are there are there any other ways for us to get access to a paid Zoom license other than paying full list price or, you know, borrowing an account from a leader? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I'm not aware of any discussion that's going on at a national level uh, as far as, you know, a, a, a discounted group rate with, you know, all the different councils and, and units out there. Um, I think a lot of this happens so quickly that we're all just kind of scrambling a little bit. Um, but I haven't heard anything as far as any type of discounts available to, to scouting units. You know, the biggest thing that I've seen that Zoom has offered is specifically to um, the education field, um, school districts, educators, things like that. But any, I haven't seen anything and I'm not aware of any, uh, anything that the National Council is pursuing um, uh, for scouting in general. Okay. Yeah, I wish they would. It would make this a lot easier for, for all of us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, thanks. Yeah. I think I saw, uh, John, were you raising your hand earlier? Okay, okay. Um, any, other, any other questions out there? Um, I see one chat. I see some people only have a black background with their names on them. Uh, what setting is that? So depending on how people want to uh, display themselves or not, uh, everybody's got a video and I uh, video option. Um, I just clicked, um, you can click stop video or start video. I just clicked my stop video. So obviously I went away, I just clicked it back. And so, you know, from to start video and here I am again. So my guess is probably none of y'all want to see me, so I should stop video, but, um, but yeah, that's where that setting is. It's if you're on your zoom screen, uh, it's in the lower left-hand corner, um, of, of, of your screen. Tim, Tim, you're on mute right now. That's fine. I didn't have anything to say. Oh, um, the land is. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you might want to go over the controllers or features that some of this has. It's I I think some of that is confusing for a newcomer. I, I've done our troop is doing Zoom meetings, and I'll echo what Vicky and Tim both said. It's been very successful, and the kids really enjoy it. But for the the newbie that's not familiar with even the screen. You want to go over that real quick and maybe that helps identify some of the questions, even the view, I think, the speaker view and gallery view and that type of thing. Sure. No, that's that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so when, when everybody logged in, you know, they had that screen pop up um, and it, it basically starts as kind of a, a black background and then you've got all these individual screens in there. Um, Within the actual Zoom screen itself, uh, at least the way I'm looking at it right now, because I've got mine expanded to the entire size of, of my computer, um, all the menu items are at the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to have a few more than, than the rest of you do because I'm, I'm, I'm the host of this meeting. Vicki and Tim Overrock will probably see many of the same things I have because I've made them co-hosts. Um, but everything that I've got is available at the bottom. Probably the ones that I use most commonly um, are gonna be the mute feature, uh, the video feature, um, which is again, the video and audio. Um, I use manage participants a lot. Uh, if you click on that, um, it'll, it'll, it, for me, it shows me who's in there, um, how they've got themselves set. Um, I can go in as, as the host of the meeting I can mute everybody. I can, um, you know, uh, change each individual's settings one at a time. Uh, there's lots of different things that I can do. Um, let's see, I'm going to ask, not that you need to do this, Edmund, share, but I can. Can you share your screen and show us this? Um, I don't, I can see if I can share this one. I don't know. I've never tried to share the screen that you I'm working on. You can't share Zoom. It's it very intentionally blanks it out while you're sharing. Yeah. So I just so I just clicked the share to share my Zoom screen, and you're probably not seeing anything. Right. Okay, 
So unfortunately, I can't share this. The best way to do it, honestly, uh, that I have found is uh, just kind of trial and error. I, I, I pick some of the district executives um, that I work with uh, and set up a special meeting for them just to play around with what I could do. Um, you know, uh, so, and then the share screen button is one that I use pretty commonly. If you've got PowerPoint presentations you want to share, if you've got documents you want to share, um, the uh, image that I shared earlier, uh, the most important thing to, to, to remember with share screen, uh, it's important to have, I found it easier to have all the documents that you want to share open and ready to go, rather than try to find them, open them, then share them, uh, things like that. Um, those are the ones that I use most frequently. There's a chat box on here as well. Uh, if you click on that, uh, it'll open the chat up, it'll close the chat down. Um, and within everything that you open, um, tip for, on my computer, that pops up as I'm looking at it on the right side. You can, uh, there's the little th three little dots uh, there with each section that you open has some other options that you can um, that you can utilize within the meeting so sorry i can't share it with you to show you what i'm doing um but again i, I found it um i've i've learned a lot just just kind of playing around uh unfortunate fortunately um everything you know it, it's i found it really hard to break um basically if you screw it up too bad you just log out and log back in so Hey, uh, Cortland? Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, I found out of the meeting uh, yesterday, if you hit the space bar, uh, that'll uh, temporarily take your mute off your mic and you don't have to click it. Yeah. Yep. Any other, any other questions? Anybody else had any experience with this that they may share above and beyond what we've, we've shared? Looks like John, yes. John, you're currently on mute. There you go. Yeah, sorry, just a question. Is there a way for the control bar on the top to, to stay rather than fade away after four or five seconds? That kind of gets annoying to try to play with the settings and it, it always vanishes. By the yeah, time you I'm, it. I'm not aware of one, okay. Tim. One of the things is I, I see that John, you're using an iPad. Um, if you use an actual like a, a laptop or a PC, when you mouse over it is when it appears. So it's one of those things that appears only if the mouse is there. Um, I don't think there's a setting to uh, make it stay. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, I have another question. Um, back to this chat, the group chat. So right now you have chat to everyone or chat to the hosts. Um, the challenge is with, is there a way to set it to chat with everyone only and eliminate one-to-one -one with a host? Because if you have one-to-one -one chat with a host, you still run into the too deep leadership challenge where a scout could be messaging a single host and nobody else is, it's not visible to anyone else. Right. Um, so there is, I think you're asking, there are four different settings uh, that I'm looking at right now. Participant, participant can chat with no one, host only, everyone publicly, everyone publicly and privately. Um, and you have everyone publicly, which probably also includes hosts. So, I mean, good form, if a kid, ho if a kid messages you privately, technically, you know, I mean, they're not, they're not, they're not, under youth protection, we are. So as long as you only respond to everyone, you know, you're still maintaining youth, you know, the, the too deep leadership, but it's a, it's a practice I think the adults need to be aware of is yeah. make sure when you respond, respond to everyone, don't respond just to that one person because now you did have, create a problem. Right, very good point, very good point. And anything else?
Okay. Well, um, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, again, I want to say thank you to uh, oh, th thank you to Vicky, thank you to Tim for helping us out um, uh, with sharing some of their experiences. Uh, thank you to the rest of you who have used this and shared some of your insight as well. Uh, hopefully, those of you that are um, joining us or, or looking at these at, at this option, uh, you know, for your for your den meetings, for your troop meetings, uh, found some information that was useful uh, and informative. Um, if you've got any other further questions or follow up, feel free to reach out to me. Um, each of you should have my email address. Uh, if not, it's courtland.bowles at scouting.org. You can also find me uh, on the council website. Uh, so feel free if you've got any follow-up uh, questions, observations, uh, anything that we can share uh, to, please, uh, to please reach out. Um, with that, um, I'll, let you, I'll let all of you get on with the rest of your day. Uh, enjoy the nice weather. Uh, I know I'm going to as, 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 as are my dogs, uh, all three of them barking like crazy during this. So. Thank you everybody for coming and uh, look forward to seeing you um, out in the field, out of camp, out at meetings uh, as soon as we can get, get past all this. Have a good day.